Hi guys, this is Scribbly again with another pen review. Today we are going to have a look at the Lamy Studio and I got the Lamy Studio sent for review by Frank from Fonto Plumo. Here you have all the details. Thanks a lot Frank for sending me this pen uh, for your review. Why are we having a look at this pen here? The reason why we're having a look at this pen here is this pen here. Right, I have already reviewed the Lamy Studio a while ago. You find that review on my blog scribbly.org or on my YouTube channel. And this here is the Imperial Blue Lamy Studio. Now the Imperial Blue Lamy Studio is a really beautiful pen, but it has one problem that many people complain about. And this is this highly polished chrome section here that when you write with that pen for quite a while or you get slightly sweaty hands maybe in summer or you have a tendency to having wetter fingers or something like that that chrome section here actually does get slippery now very many people love the design of the lamy studio but the issue is as said that chrome section now most lamy studios do have this chrome section here the lamy studio comes also in black and i think palladium and whatever but there is one lamy studio the brushed steel that does come with a black you know sort of rubbery plastic section and i really wanted to have a look at the difference in between those two pens which is why i have asked frank here to send me the pen for review which he has kindly done again thanks a lot frank so um what i also have heard that many people do is you know they like that imperial blue finish a lot better than the brushed seal finish so they just get both pens and swap out the sections and stuff like that um that's something that you could potentially do i just like the silver with the blue and the black with the silver i think that goes really well together design wise so anyway um, i'm gonna compare those two a little bit but talk more about that pen let's start with the packaging as always just a simple gray cardboard box open that this is one of the standard lamy boxes lamy logo here open the box like that open the box like that lamy pen lays in here you get it with a proprietary t10 lamy cartridge uh, the pen takes a z26 converter the z24 converter by the way also does fit in i've tried it yesterday evening um and then you get uh, but you need to buy that uh, converter separately costs around four euro or five euro or something like that and then you get a lamy booklet with you know lamy pens inside and whatever so that's that with the packaging putting that packaging aside and let's have a look at the pen itself the pen itself as the blue one is a really really beautiful pen i really dig that design which is why i really also was so interested in reviewing the the model with another section so it's like basically a very very simple minimalist modern yet elegant pen in my opinion it it has a more or less cylindrical shape that tapers down towards both sides. Very minimalist, very clean, very straight, elegant lines. I really like that a lot. As said, a bit thicker in the middle, tapers down toward, towards both sides. Has a pretty shiny, you can see my uh, phone camera here, pretty shiny finial. Otherwise, there's nothing much going on on the finial. You have the, sorry, excuse me, you have the Lamy logo here. That is sort of a screen print, and I'm coming back to that in a minute, uh, with which this Lamy logo is put on here. Um, it's a slightly different style on printing style, I guess. I'm not sure here. Anyway, then you have the design, the main design feature of this pen, which of course is this twisted propeller shape clip, which I find really nice. It's also very useful, nice and springy. Um, tight not too tight not too loose really nice useful clip and then down here you have the bottom or the end of the pen with a small ring here and that ring is used to you heard that hold the cap in place when posting and of course you can post the pen uh, and uh, so the, that cap here can rotate on that on that ring so if you've posted it like that and you want it to be posted like that you just rotate the pen um, then you have this nice brushed steel finish which i find really nice there's um quite some sunlight outside today so you see how that reflects the light changes the appearance of the pen depending on how i angle the pen into the light essentially yeah it's like this you know brushed 
brushed steel finish, which I find is really nice. Um, when we compare those two pens, um, the brushed steel one is quite a bit more lightweight than the Imperial Blue one, for instance, which has to do with that pen here having a chrome section and that pen here having this, like I call it, a plastic, plastic, rubbery plastic section. And that section is more lightweight than that chrome section, which makes the overall pen more lightweight. It is not a lot, but you can certainly feel that the pen, the brushed steel pen is more lightweight. So now to the section, and that is why I wanted to review this pen. So you see here, this is a slightly, yeah, rubberized whatever material that is plastic section and i can tell you there is a massive difference in between holding this pen and holding that pen that pen really does get slippery after a while with this pen here there is no chance that this pen is going to get slippery whatsoever this is a really really comfortable pen to hold i like writing with that pen a lot better than writing with the imperial blue one because it just a lot better to hold. I mean, the, the section, already the section itself is really nice because it's large. It, it gives you enough room to find your grip. You can grab the pen wherever you like. Plus, uh, it is now rubbery plastic, which doesn't make your finger slip any longer. So this is really, really nice. I, honestly, I like the design of this pen better, but writing is a lot more comfortable with this pen. Then on to the nib. The nib, of course, is the regular Lamy Z50. I got a fine nib here. You see a little bit of Caveco Sunrise Orange on the nib here. I'm going to talk about the nib uh, in a minute when I do the writing sample. And when we open the pen, here's the Z26 converter that I talked about. And the pen is filled with uh, yeah, Caveco Sunrise Orange. And of course, you could also put in a Lamy T10 cartridge, the proprietary one. So uh, one last thing before I do a writing sample, or let me do a quick size comparison to a Lamy Safari. So we've done that as well. Kept, maybe like this. More or less the same length, I would say, and uncapped. I'm not gonna post those two pens because like, yeah, I mean, they are, they're fairly long pens. Also, probably the same size. So I think it's fair to say that you could say that the Lamy Studio is exactly the same size than a Lamy Safari, at least in length. Uh, of course, it's a little bit more heavy than Lamy Studio. So um, when we talk about the finish, so there's one problem with this finish, I find, and that is this brushed steel. And you can see that here, it is a little bit prone to pick to picking up scratches. I think I just like moved the clip around here a little bit. I won't do that more now. So that is something that I find a bit of an annoyance and it's important to point out. I have a, uh, this is a Lamy logo ballpoint pen here. Uh, I have that pen, I, I have to admit, I have that pen since about 10 years or maybe 15 years and it does have the same brushed steel finish and you do see on the pen that it does over time really pick up scratches. It's a bit prone to getting some indentions or something like that. So I'm not sure if that could happen with that pen body as well, but it does feel a bit lightweight and all that, and it does feel a little bit aluminium-ish or something like that. So I could see that happening with that fountain pen here as well. So, I mean, as you see from the scratch here and from the scratches here, so the, the proneness to scratchy, uh, to being scratchy or to get scratched um, is definitely there. And then another thing that one also sees here on the pen, the Lamy logo, I think because of those, you know, those lines or funnels or whatever you might want to call that, that happen from the brushing, it's a bit difficult for the color of the screen print to actually really stick on the material because of course it's gonna sort of sit on those grooves. And over time, that logo has almost disappeared on that pen here. Um, so I think that it might, of course, also disappear on that pen over time. Okay, having that said, writing sample. Uh, also one thing that I have to point out with this pen. Now, um, I, I rarely ran into, I never ran or rarely or never ran into a problem with a Lamy pen, but I did with this pen. Yeah, I have heard people having problems with that Z50 nib here, but that one here was definitely out of the box you know, dry as the Sahara. And uh, 
I kept my initial inking and writing sample for you to show you that. So out of the box, I inked that pen with Rohrer and Klingner, whatever I've written it somewhere here, whatever ink that is. As said, it was dry as the Sahara. There was next to no ink on the page. So I had to open the tines and, you know, like do some work on the nib and the tines so that in the end, it you see a clear difference, you know, a fine, very dry, very pale line as opposed to a, you know, wet dark line with shading and all that here you see shading of the ink here you see no shading whatsoever so that that nib here was really dry now if you get that pen from frank as i did i could fix that myself i'm sure frank would have sorted you out just send you maybe a new set 50 nibs i mean you can they're interchangeable nibs you can swap them they just cost like five euro or something like that though i thought i pointed out it's a bit of an annoyance when you get a pen for it costs between i don't know 35 to 50 euro depending on where you get it from as said, I'm sure Frank would have sorted you out with that pen. I could fix it myself. Now onto the writing sample. Nothing spectacular. Of course, now the pen writes. Maybe try it on a bit. No, it didn't in the course of the review. So we have this Lamy Studio here uh, with a fine nib, brushed steel finish. And yeah, the section really really nice to hold very comfortable to hold i do really like this section a lot better than the chrome highly polished section of the imperial blue pen however i like the design of the imperial blue pen a little bit better i hope that more or less comparative review was helpful to you i want to thank you frank again for sending me that pen for review and i see you guys at the next review bye bye